Hello everyone and welcome back to Orms TV. My name is Jess and this is Videography for Beginners, the series where we introduce you to the fundamental techniques for shooting professional and cinematic video. So far in this show, we've covered everything you need to know about frame rates, including their fascinating history and which ones to use for what application. And then in our second video, we spoke about shutter speed, the rules around using it in video and how you could break those rules to tell your story more effectively. If you haven't seen these videos yet, I highly recommend you check them out. They are some of my favorites on Orms TV and I'm sure you'll find them really helpful if you are new to videography. I've linked a playlist in the description below. Of course, the logical next step in this series would be to talk about aperture in video. However, I am not 100% done scripting that video just yet. So instead, today we're gonna talk about the greatest mistakes that new videographers make when they are beginning their creative journey. I started trying to shoot videos seriously in late 2016. And until I went to the Orms Cape Town School of Photography in 2018, I was entirely self-taught. While being self-taught is 100% fine and very durable these days considering all the online resources we have access to, it is very easy for self-taught videographers to pick up a lot of bad habits in the early days of their career. I certainly did. For this video, I've tried to stay away from the mistakes most commonly mentioned in other videos on this topic. Everyone knows that in your initial stages of learning about video creation, you're not gonna understand the 180 degree rule properly, and you're probably gonna do all sorts of jank with your shutter speed. Instead, I really want to focus on the rarer pieces of advice that I wish I had received early on in my career. Okay, enough with this intro already. Let's jump in with our first point. The first mistake you can make is not improving your visual literacy. Film is a language, a means of communication, and the only way for someone to learn a language is to be exposed to it regularly and then for them to practice expressing themselves in that language. And that's why we have this concept of visual literacy in film. Visual literacy refers to an individual's ability to read images. Can they recognize the present patterns and decipher them? Are they able to identify storytelling techniques and how they were used? Can they infer meaning from the image before them? Simply put, it is the viewer's ability to see the why of an image and to recognize how that why was achieved. If you are only watching blockbusters or films that perform poorly with critics or the same popular mainstream content creators that everyone else is watching, you will never fully grasp the language of filmmaking because your exposure to the vocabulary of images will be so limited. I want to exhort you to step out of your content consumption comfort zone and find diverse and challenging films and videos to watch. Watch indie films and short films and films in different languages and from different countries. Find obscure content creators and learn from how they produce their videos. I know it can be really intimidating at first, but I promise you, becoming visually literate is so rewarding. And once you get a taste for visually rich narratives constructed by master storytellers, you won't want to go back to anything inferior. To make it a bit easier for you to get started, I'm gonna refer you to a blog post that I wrote for the Orms Connect blog. In this post, I list a couple of places you can go to find visually complex stories and unconventional content including articles and YouTube channels. The link is in the description below under the resources heading. The second mistake is getting caught up in the pursuit of originality. This is actually a really common struggle among creative individuals and sometimes it can lead to us becoming so terrified of copying the work of other creators or even too scared to consume media in case we accidentally imitate it. However, this is complete Folly, because the whole concept of true originality these days is completely bogus. All creations these days are simply remixes of existing material. This doesn't mean that they are inferior or worthless. In the vast majority of cases, content that is remixed respectfully and expertly is actually just as good, 
if not better, than its influences and source of inspiration. Imitation is how we learn. Give yourself permission to copy other creators and create derivative work in your early years of filmmaking. The more you continue to work on your visual literacy and broaden your arsenal of practical skills and creative influences, the better your creations will become. Then all that is left is to find the courage to start sharing your personal experiences and telling the stories that matter most to you. Your work will probably not be original, but it will be unique, personal and meaningful. If you would like to delve deeper into this fascinating topic, I highly recommend that you check out the episode of Orms Air, the Orms podcast that I did with my colleague Rachel where we discussed why no ideas are original and why this doesn't actually matter. You can also take a look at the show notes for that episode to explore the documentaries, articles, videos and books that we reference in the podcast. The link to both is in the description below under the resources heading. Mistake number three is buying expensive gear too early on in your career. I mentioned in our previous video about our camera equipment that in addition to creating content for Orms TV, I also teach post-production at the Orms Cape Town School of Photography. A mistake that I see a lot of my students making and one that I have certainly made myself is investing in expensive camera equipment before they have a clear idea of the direction in which their videography career is headed. I know in the beginning gear can be really exciting and you will be tempted to accumulate it because you'll think that it will make you a better visual storyteller or simply because it's the same equipment that your favorite content creators are using to make their videos. I want to encourage you to wait at least a few months before making any major gear purchases. Most of us end up nowhere near where we thought we would at the beginning of our creative journeys. I thought I wanted to run a a wedding film production company. I even bought an expensive gimbal because every wedding videographer on YouTube told me I needed one. Look at where I am now, sitting in front of a camera, talking to you guys about originality and visual literacy and content creation. And I haven't used that gimbal in almost two years. The two types of videography could not be more different. And I'm way happier doing this than I was shooting weddings. Use the gear you have right now. You can rent and borrow other equipment and experiment with it to see how it fits into your creative process. Dabble in as many different areas of video creation as you can. Give yourself time to evolve creatively and understand yourself better. For most of us, it takes months, if not years, to figure out which niche we'll settle into. You can always buy new gear at a later stage, but trust me, the resale value and the size of the secondhand gear market in South Africa specifically is really small. You'll struggle way more to get rid of unnecessary equipment than you will with buying something new. So take your time with the decision to purchase anything. The fourth mistake you can make is not seeking or being receptive to feedback on your work. While it is important to learn to trust your own creative instincts, it is also absolutely vital to regularly seek feedback on your work and to be radically honest with yourself if the criticism you receive is not in line with your own opinions about your creations. There is this concept referred to as the Dunning-Kruger effect, which examines the relationship between confidence and expertise. The rule is that generally those who are learning a new skill will initially over overestimate their ability and the quality of their work because they don't yet possess the skills and the understanding to recognize their shortcomings. The more the individual grows in knowledge and in skill, the more accurately they'll be able to assess the quality of their work and identify areas in which they need to improve. This is why it is so important to rely on the input from trusted and experienced mentors in the early stages of our creative journeys. Their objective feedback will help to combat the Dunning-Kruger effect and push us towards a more honest relationship 
with our confidence in our abilities and our actual level of skill. Surround yourself with creatives who are more experienced than you, who work harder than you, who are more naturally talented than you. Ask the dumb and obvious questions. Seek out opinions that will challenge the ones that you already hold. Conduct yourself with open-mindedness and humility always and you will begin to see a rapid growth in your competence. Take it from someone who has walked and is still walking this path. Having a teachable heart and the willingness to admit my lack of ability has opened more doors for me than being a stubborn know-it-all ever has. I want to encourage you to listen to this podcast episode that we did with visual artist and filmmaker Justice McKelly. In that episode, he talks about this topic among other things, and I believe there's a lot of powerful wisdom contained therein that will really help young creators. The link, as with everything else, is in the description under the resources heading. And finally, number five, being too afraid to make mistakes. This is still my greatest struggle as a creative person. I fall in love with a concept that I have, but then I become terrified that I'll mess it up in the execution. So instead, I settle for a mediocre version of that idea, or I just don't create at all. Trying to do something and failing at it is one of the most important steps in learning. Some of the most valuable skills and experiences that I've accumulated have come from absolutely whopping mistakes I've made as a video creator. We have to accept that some of our beloved ideas will be sacrificed on the altar of learning and growing creatively. But there is nothing to say that we can't revisit those concepts later when we are better filmmakers and now more equipped with the skills we need to tell those stories. You are going to fail sometimes. My encouragement is that you embrace the idea of failing spectacularly. If you're going to mess up, let it be in the pursuit of the boldest, most imaginative, most ambitious ideas that you have. In the long run, it will be worth it. If you're battling to find creative courage and feeling smothered by your comfort zone, I want to recommend this monologue that I wrote at the end of 2018 as my final project for my year-long course in cinematography for content creation. I hope that me sharing my struggle with my fear of failure makes you feel heard and hopefully empowered to start fighting back against your own doubts. If you found value in this video, I really hope that you'll consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate every single one of our viewers and would love to have more of you join our community. Please let us know what videography related video you would like to see next on Orms TV. You can pop that suggestion down in the comments below. I tell you guys this every single time, but we do actually read every single comment and respond to as many as we possibly can. But that's it for this video. Until next time, cheers.